Let us learn about JavaScript object creation. How do we create an object in JavaScript? The idea in JavaScript is that you use functions to create objects. So a function is known as a constructor of an object. So for instance, we can do uh, the easiest way, which is we could just return one of these maps. As I mentioned before, um, a map is an object in, in JavaScript. Um, and I, the easiest um, function I could do to create an, an object could be, um, let me delete this, would be just to return a map, right? That's the easiest way. I already taught you that an object is a map. If I have a function and I return that a map, then that function creates an object. Okay, so I can even print out log p. So in this case, I created a shape that returns an object with two fields, one for x, another one for y. And I can just uh, create it by calling my function shape uh, that initialize x is with the first parameter and y with the second parameter. In this case, I created p, um, or I assigned the, the object to a variable p. And then I printed out that variable, which showed me uh, the object created. So nothing too surprising here. Another way um, you could do is, okay, so now, so this is how you create a class, right? You could think of this function shape as a class. So whenever I want to create an object of type shape, I would call this function, which would return this, this object. As you can imagine, this is a very low level idea of a class, right? Uh, you would probably would not call this a class, but let's assume it is. So if that's if shape is a class, how would you extend a class? Well, a very simple way of extending a class could be just calling it, right? So you would, uh, let's say I want to create my uh, a, a rectangle that extends a shape. Okay, so here what I'm saying is a shape has at least an x and a y position, and now I want to define a new class called a rectangle that extends the x, y position with also a width and the length, right? So what I can do is I can call the su super, right? Which is the shape. Uh, and I can get the object that was created by shape. And then I can extend it by adding two more fields, right? So in this case, I added a field width and I added a field length. And I finally, I returned the object. So as you can see, this is a very direct way, very low level way of creating an object. So finally here in this example, what I do is I create an R, a rectangle. So I, I create a new rectangle that is positioned on X equals zero, Y equals one, uh, width equals 10 and length equals three, right? And I can even print it out. And as you can see here, which, what, what thing failed? Ah, love that asserts. Okay, let's comment this out just to see if everything works well. Okay, so width is 10, length is 10. Okay, so let's see if x, y is working. x, y is working. Let's see if width is working. Okay, so the height. Ah, because it's not height, it should be length. That's what we called it. Should be height here, but whatever. Right. Okay. Typo here. Height, 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 height. Okay. Okay. So this is an, a way of, of thinking about a class extending another. And that is to say, well, one very basic way, if you didn't have like a, a structure way of doing it, like you have in Java where you just do, where you just write extends, you could encode it with this pattern, right? You would call the function, the constructor function shape, and then you would provide the, the fields and that would return your new object. And then you can extend that object because in JavaScript, you can add new fields just by assigning them. As you can see, if you do any typos, you're kind of left down in the in the water, right? I wrote a, a, a I write a typo here. So, for instance, x height doesn't exist. 
of course the assertion will fail um, because x height is now undefined so if i write it like this it should work so it's not a, an error to talk about a field that doesn't exist it just returns with the, the value undefined okay which is something you can test against so in this case it should be height three and everything is working okay so this is a very basic idea just to, to bring it back and summarize it um, you have a function and you can use a function to create an object just by returning that that object uh, and then you can have an idea of extending by just calling the constructor of what you're extending however this doesn't capture the the full potential of an object-oriented system in that if you call a method of shape it should appear somewhere so there's we haven't talked about the idea of methods or anything like that so we can do a bit better and javascript actually offers a bit more functionality than that so what uh, the way JavaScript actually works is that each function by default has an object, okay? Uh, and this object, so each function is an object. So here's another example, okay? So you write a function and you give it a name, okay? So it's, this is a regular function. This is what we've learned. We can write a, a named function with the, the keyword function and then the name of the function after. There's a, two new things here. First one is, is using this. Second thing is using new, right? We haven't learned about that. We're learning it right now. Okay, so how, how does it work? So the functionality here is exactly the same as uh, the one in shape. Okay, just as a disclaimer. So what we're doing again is the same thing. When we call new shape, it should return a new object that also has an X and a Y defined. Okay, so just to confirm, I'm gonna do console.log. I'm gonna print P1. Okay, just to convince you that this is indeed working. Okay, and you can see that this, now it appears shape here, and you see zero and one. Okay, so this is, the function shape is an object okay and it's a constructor object and you know that because it's initializing the this so this is like a special uh, object or map that is created when you call new when you use this keyword so that this is tightly coupled with this new keyword so when when you do new what's happening behind the scenes is exactly this so when you do new it's the same as imagine that under underneath in at runtime what's happening is you're creating a new ob a new empty object and you're passing the object assigning that empty object to this okay which i called obj just to to, to distinguish between the this and then what's happening at the end notice that there's no return shape returns nothing because it's just a constructor that's syntactic sugar for returning obj, which is the this. Okay, so that's what I want you to understand. When you look at the code that I just showed you, where you define a function, and if you manipulate the this dot field, what you're doing is you're initializing the object that is created when you use the keyword new. Okay, so this is a special function only needed and it's special because it's referring to this, only needed when you use new. Okay? At runtime, when you print it out, it assigns the name of the function to the object. So that's why this object here is called shape. And you know that it's just something that the, the JavaScript interpreter knows. Okay, it knows the name of this function, so it knows also that this is a special instance. It's not an empty... You can think of the first example as creating an anonymous object, right? An object that has an unnamed class, whereas here the class is actually shape. This is the name of the class. And we'll see a bit more how does extension work here. That's what we're gonna learn in the next few slides. Okay, so we can add, finally, we can add a method. That's something we haven't seen before. So now I wanted to create a method that has um, a method translate and what translate does it adds x and y translates the x and y position right so it adds x and the y so let me copy paste the example oops 
Okay, so what I have now is a method. So the way I define a, a method is by I assign a new field that is an unnamed function with x and y. So an unnamed function can also be written like this. Right? And now notice that it's talking about this as well. Oh boy. Another this. So this, this, and this, this are the same. They are referring to the runtime object. Okay? So this is a special function that is works as a method. So when I call, so let me, um, let me print out P1, and then I'm going to translate, and then I'm going to print out P1 again. Okay, so notice what's happens. what happens when I print out P1. Class shape, right, because I created a function shape. And now we see a translate field, translate field here. Um, it, sh it says it has a special marker called function because it doesn't show the code, right? It just says that this is a function. And that's how we know shape has a method translate. And now I call it as usual in C style bat slash Java style languages. I do object dot method, and then I pass the values to it. So in this case, it would be X and Y. Uh, and then what I did, I added 10 and 20. So that's why I see X assigned to 10 and Y assigned to 21. Okay. So if you're familiar with object oriented programming, this shouldn't be too surprising. If you're not, then you might like this slide, which takes away the, ma the magic. So what's happening here in this slide is making it very explicit what's going on. So the constructor function takes a special object, right? Which, uh, when invoked, it will initialize three fields, x, y, and z, uh, x, y, and translate. Finally, it will return object. The interesting part here is the assignment of translate, which is creating a lambda that is capturing the closure, right? It has a closure. So it's capturing OBJ, which is given by parameter, right? So because if you think about what you've learned already in Racket, this is essentially a lambda that captured this object. The only difference with what you're used to in Racket is that this object is mutable. So if I do plus equals, it's mutating that object. Right? But it's the object that was passed here. No magic. So the this is again syntactic sugar for the mad the implicit parameter that is in the constructor that is that only shows up when you call new. Right? So the convention is when you call new, what's happening is you're initializing it with an empty object that is then passed outside. Okay? So if you understand this, then you should understand. So if you ha you're not familiar with object-oriented systems, work your, work your way backwards. So first look at the explicit version, and then look at the syntactic sugar version. This is what, both of these are valid JavaScript, by the way. You can use either one. It's just that JavaScript gives you this functionality that makes it a bit shorter, more implicit, but simpler and less verbose. Okay. You can further even add a bit more syntactic sugar and write this exactly the same exactly the same code, but now using the class constructor. So you write, you say, this is a class, this is the constructor. I'm initializing with X and Y, and then I'm defining a method called translate. Notice that there's no function here. You just write the name and there's a special name called constructor for the first, uh, the one that initializes exactly the same code. Okay. So next, what we're going to learn is in the next lesson uh, and today in this lesson. So today, today, what we're going to learn is really inheritance. That's um, the next key part. But what we're going to learn is how to take this most basic approach and convert something that is high level like this into this, something low level like this, right? If you think of it from the implementer's perspective, 
if you can implement this, right, this very simple thing where you have objects that are mutable and you can update, uh, where you can update fields and you have lambdas with closures, right, that capture variables and so on, you should be able to represent this functionality so far, right? Um, the left-hand side is just syntactic sugar. It's just something that helps the programmer, but it doesn't add anything to the implementation of the interpreter itself. Okay, similarly, this. So by now, I hope that when you look at the programming language, it starts making more sense what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, and it will make even more sense after we dissect this a bit further. So in the next video, we're gonna cover object inheritance.